Hello everybody, it's Jay here uh, in Seattle, and this is day two of our five books a day, and for five days. So I'm going to give you a few more recommendations today, uh, in no particular order. So we're just going to go through this, and I, I was asked uh, this past Sunday to recommend some books, and I realized, you know what, I bet you there's a bunch of books I've read that I could recommend, and uh, so that's why I figured I would just try to do five every day this week so that's what i'm going to do go through these too fast won't won't focus on them too long but uh, all of these are i think worth a good read um, my first one is from martin luther king it's called the strength uh, to love uh, incredible book um, i have read it in all I, i've read it in all sorts of different parts um, i think it's one that you can kind of read in, into different places um, one of my favorite chapters is the chapter he wrote called uh, How Should Christians View Communism is a really good one. Um, also, uh, Loving Your Enemies. Uh, we did talk about Loving Your Enemies uh, this from this book at, in one of uh, the revolution talks and gatherings, which I do sometimes. Um, I enjoy the Bible, but there's a lot of other good, honest truths out there as well. And this is one of my favorite people in the world, Dr. King. Uh, following along in the footsteps of Dr. King, again, another book by our friend John Hume. Uh, last Yesterday's was a book about John Hume. This is actually a letter, uh, a book, actually, written by John Hume. And what's great about this is it's in his own words, his own experience, and it ends before uh, the Good Friday Agreement. So it's, it's an interesting book to see where he was at all those years as uh, he was trying to help bring the peace process to Northern Ireland and to end a 30-year civil war uh, amongst his, his people, who he dearly loved. And like I said before, anytime anyone tells me something is impossible, I always think of uh, John Hume. Let's just stick with that, I guess. Well, it looks like I have a little bit of a theme today. Um, a Call to Conscience by Dr. King is a collection of his speeches and sermons, and it's really incredible. We uh, we did the uh, Beyond Vietnam, uh, a very big, a very big speech for him or a sermon for him to give when uh, the Vietnam War was happening. He had remained silent for quite a while, and uh, eventually felt like he had to speak out against the Vietnam War, and uh, it was really great. And I, I I used this talk when we talked about why we were. Uh, talking against the war between Israel and Palestine, and now that war has even gotten much bigger, but why we're anti-war and why we have to speak our conscience and uh, live our conscience. Uh, again, another great one by Dr. King, and as I said before, he's uh, probably, if not my favorite, one of my top favorite uh, authors, uh, people, just human beings. This, this guy is, is one of my heroes, definitely. Let's see. Another book on nonviolence <laughs> by Mark Kurlansky. This book, I, someone I think gave this book to me in Brooklyn, and I ended up getting two copies of it, I remember, and I really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, the Forwards by the Dalai Lama, interesting enough, but this is a great book on nonviolence. I have a few more books on nonviolence, maybe I'll share this week, or maybe we'll have to do like more book recommendations later later because I've already got a good pile going uh, to do this week but yeah so here's a, another great book on nonviolence uh, nonviolence is very vital to me and very important to me uh, the first 300 years of Christianity it was a nonviolent faith a nonviolent religion um, and it changed a lot after Constantine and Rome uh, came in and, and took a hold of things and this is really, for me, the essence of one of the ideas uh, that King brought to us and, and Bayer Rustin brought to King, but it, it's really, to me, uh, just a gospel foundation. It's, it's really, nonviolence is, is something of grace it's, and love, and it's a brave way to show grace and love. And it's also why we talk about disagreeing well and arguing well. Um, because when you're free from conflict, usually, or if you don't, if you, if you don't want to have conflict, which will happen in nonviolence, you usually go straight to war, nonviolence. Uh, exhausts all those 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 options and tries to keep us living in a life of peace. So check that out. And the last book here is by uh, what well, was edited uh, by John D. Caputo, but it is a book about Saint Paul and the philosophers. 
And the idea here is that Paul is a philosopher, uh, not just a theologian, and talks about the philosophy and his influence among the philosophers. I'm trying to, it's been a while since I've read this book, uh, but Pete Rollins had it. And then I was like, oh, I got to steal that. And he's like, get your own. So I got my own. And uh, yeah, so you, you get to hear about from Caputo, who's an amazing philosopher and theologian himself, and uh, just different philosophical ideas um, with the Apostle Paul being mixed in. And as you know, I'm a big fan of the Apostle Paul and revolution is very Paulinian. So there you go. Those are the Tuesdays, five and five. So yeah, check those books out. Leave a comment. Maybe you've read the books. Maybe you liked them. Maybe you hated them. I don't know. You can leave a comment there. Maybe you have more books to recommend or books off the back of that. We'd be glad and happy to read those because there's all those subjects have been covered in many different ways. And it's always great to find out new information. Um, for me, you know, you hear a lot about deconstruction, but for me, my whole life of theology and understanding philosophy and psychology is always changing. It's always reconstructing and deconstructing. You know, it's always moving and changing. And uh, that's the great thing about continuing to be open to hear new voices, uh, new truths, and, you know, some that aren't truths, you know, just things that you have to sh struggle with and, 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 and go, oh, well, this seems good and this seems good. And then you get like this, like, dialectic happening, um, which can open you up to a whole new thing and give you some whole brand new ideas to think about and to share with others. So there you go. Day two, five of five, let us know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for supporting Revolution. Uh, we cannot do this work without you. And uh, we will see you again on Wednesday for five in five. Bye-bye.